Well, what's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. It's actually 2 o'clock in the afternoon on a Thursday. The season, oh my God, is just flying by so daggone fast. It is crazy where we are right now. And um, I want to have a conversation with you guys about what we're going. You know, it doesn't matter what Dak Prescott has done in the Dallas Cowboys offense. There's always an explanation about it. You know, here it is. We have Cam. Oh, Cam. Cam Newton, one of the most electrifying quarterbacks that have been out there. The Cam Newton, who literally used to run over people and things. Going through and throwing a little bit of shade at some of the quarterbacks that are doing things right now. We've heard people like, you know, Joy Taylor, who can't stand. Have you noticed something? When you watch speak, when Joy Taylor or Shady McCoy have to say something about good about Dak Prescott or the Cowboys, the body language that they have is kind of like, oh, I don't want to say it, but I have to. You, you can tell. You can tell that it literally hurts. It's kind of like George Allen used to say that when you lose, a little part of you inside dies. Nothing important now, you know, but, but something in you dies. And you can see when Joy Taylor has to turn around because she looks so stupid saying constantly that Dak sucks, that it hurts. Something inside of her died. I, it might be a fingernail, you know, or one of the fake fingernails just pops off or something. Yeah, you, but you know, it hurts. It literally hurts. Here's the thing that's kind of interesting because the Cowboys are doing things that, you know, people thought were unimaginable, things that you just don't think are even possible. For example, Dron Bland, you know, now being ahead of everybody else in the history of football with pick sixes. You know, when people buried us because they said, oh, Diggs is gone, the Cowboys, you know, that defense isn't going to be the same. But you get a guy like Deron Bland stepping up and breaking the record of pick sixes. Here's another one that's interesting. Now, we know about the Cowboys being at home. Of course, people will say, well, the Cowboys, you know, they just play nobodies and so on. And the Dak Prescott as Cam, oh, Cam, Cam put it yesterday. He's a game manager. His thing is just don't screw up. You don't have to score every time you get the football. Mind you, I want to say I'm going to ask a question for a friend. How many times have you seen the punter on the field the last three weeks? I think it's only one. I think we've only seen the punter on the field one time in the last three weeks. But be that as it may, I want to show you guys something that's kind of interesting to me, to me at least. You know, the Cowboys um, have been scoring a lot of points. Now, the NFL record this season is 606. I don't think that they can get that with four games left because they're about 185 points away from it. Unfortunately, some of the games like the San Francisco game <clears throat> kind of hurt that one, as well as the Cardinal games. Those two games, the ones, they would have to score 44 points a game in each of the next game per average to break that record. But here's what's an interesting one. I want to want to pop this up on the screen here. This is from Stat Muse. Okay, let's look at this real quick. From Stat Muse, this is the teams that have had 40 or more points in a game in a season. And what's interesting is the Dallas Cowboys with Dak Prescott have their second year. This year is their second. 2021, we ended up having five games, five games of um, 40 or more points in a season. Already this year, we have five. And if the Cowboys get one, they will be tied for the most 40 plus games in a season. Now, what's funny to me is, is I was looking to see how many of Cam Newton's teams, uh, you know, the Carolina Panthers, they went 15 and one. And I don't see that team there. I was looking for the Rams, which is also known as the greatest show on turf. And I see the 1950 Rams there. And then I see the 2000 Rams, which would have been the greatest show on turf. 
What also I see is the Green Bay Packers of 2011, 2011 on there, which was the year after they won the Super Bowl, and they were just, they were number one offense. The thing that's amazing to me on this is there's only one quarterback on there that's on that list twice. And that is the New Orleans Saints. And that is with, of course, um, Drew Brees. But here's where it really gets to be crazy. If the Cowboys, if the Cowboys, which still have games left, okay, we've got the Lions, we've got, of course, um, Buffalo, we've got uh, uh, Miami, which could be a shootout. Um, We've got the Commanders. If the Cowboys can squeak in one more, one more game, the Cowboys can be at 40. They can be there tying the record of most 40 or more games in a season. It's kind of interesting. But what you'll also notice is Drew Brees is the only quarterback on there besides Dak Prescott that's had five or more 40 plus games in a season. Dak Prescott and Drew Brees. It's kind of amazing, don't you think? Now, and also, but truth in advertising here, let me say um, that Cam Newton is right about being a game manager. And I will say beyond being just a game manager, being a game changer as well. Because you can be a game changer in the wrong way. And see, that's where I look at it and say, Josh Allen can be a game changer to win the game for you. And he can also be a game changer who can lose the game for you. But I don't see too many other quarterbacks on there. In fact, it's only the one. Even as good as Pat Mahomes is, he's got one season of that. It's, I know it's hard I know it's hard for the talking heads and things, the experts that, you know, all looked at all these quarterbacks when Dak Prescott was in the draft. You know, they thought that Paxton Lynch and Connor Cook and Carson Wentz and Jared Goff, that all of these guys were going to be way better. And over the years of constantly believing that Dak, you're not believing what you're actually seeing. Dak Prescott has the chance if he has a really good year finishes this year strong and has a really good year next year to surpass Tony Romo in yards and possibly in touchdown passes already in his career he's already second in TD passes it's kind of amazing if Dak Prescott with the help of his friends Because I still believe that MVP may be an individual award, but you're not getting it without the people around you. If your receivers aren't catching the football, if your offensive line isn't able to block, if your play caller doesn't call the right plays, you ain't going to be MVP. Just not. If Dak Prescott becomes NFL MVP, You have to chalk up another one of those things that nobody, not Troy, not Roger, not Romo, has earned on the Dallas Cowboys. And that'd be another notch on the headboard. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, you know I appreciate each and every one of you guys, as well as you ladies, and I hope you all are having a great day. I hope to see you guys tonight. I'm going to go do some more work in my workshop, and um, I'll see you guys there. Peace. We don't boys.